There are some challenges that are given to us and some that we choose for ourselves. Some we take on alone and some that we take on with friends. And the challenge we choose to take on with our friends is a challenge we take on gladly. This is The Lost Creek. Thomas picked me up from the Denver airport, and I quickly got about sorting all of my gear for a three-day trip. Although Brian and Andrew couldn't make it, we would be joined by Sierra. Okay, today we're headed to Lost Creek Wilderness, and we've got Sierra. The weather is perfect. You feeling good? I'm feeling good. I feel like I forgot something. We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> We drove south past the Denver skyline towards our first stop to pick up the last couple of supplies for the trip. We knew what we needed, so we hurried in to grab everything and get back on the road as quickly as possible. With that taken care of, it was back to the road with a three hour drive. Okay, I think we're good to go. We've got new boots for Thomas, sleeping pad for Thomas, dehydrated meals, that was it. Traffic wasn't too bad as we made it to the outskirts of the city. And towards the west, we saw a taste of the landscape that awaited us. Eventually, the traffic thinned out and we were driving through the Rocky Mountains. So for our longtime viewers, this is actually road 285. And 285 goes all the way down to Guadalupe National Park in Texas. In that episode, we said, stay alive, avoid the 285. But if you're in Texas, you take the 285, don't go on it at night. It's a oil rig road and there's way too many semis on such a narrow path. Well, just looking at this environment already, I'm already getting super excited to get out. Before we could get out though, we had one final stop to quickly fill up on gas. We've got gear, food, gas, bathroom. I think we're good to go. I think so too. Two hour drive. I'm gonna fall asleep, Thomas. Good luck. I'm used to it. The roads got narrower as the mountains got taller. And after a short nap for Robbie, the paved roads ended and it was dirt roads for the last hour of the drive. Okay, this is one of those roads that's super long and windy and you can't go very fast on it. So even though we only have 4.9 miles left, we still have 29 minutes to drive. You're doing a very good job, Thomas. Thanks, Rob. I did a good job sleeping. <laughs> All right, we missed our turn by like several hundred feet. Yeah, <laughs> it's a little too narrow to turn around, so we're just gonna back up here. Yep, still clear. That's hilarious. I think this is our turn, right? Yep, this is it. Good work. <laughs> now, my car should be able to make this. Wow, it's gotten significantly more bumpy. Yeah. Hoping that was the worst of it, just right there. We'll see. Yep. <laughs> yeah, pretty bumpy. What they say when they like you need a four wheel vehicle on these roads. Okay, we're gonna take a look at the paper map real quick because we're not 100% sure this is actually taking us to the trailhead. Okay, North that's, Fork? That's where we're at, right here. Yeah, we should have kept on going. Is down Lost there. Park where we wanna go? Yeah. Okay. Good thing we stopped. Yep. And uh, bad on Google Maps, I guess. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Good, good, good. Google Maps had gotten us slightly off course, but Thomas still saw the bright side of the situation. I don't know, dude. It's just like really sketchy roads that like only some cars can get on. It's just a lot of fun because it feels like you're like truly adventuring, which is ironic because you're still in a vehicle. <laughs> All right, back on track. It's a fun detour. 
and after no time at all, we made it to the trailhead. We quickly got out of the car and took in our surroundings. Wow, dude, this weather is perfect. Oh my God, I'm so excited. I cannot wait to move my body. Oh, I bet Sierra's gonna be excited too. I think so. Oh, hi, doggy. Hey, girl. We all put on our packs and prepared ourselves for what was sure to be a girl. tough hike. All right, you got everything? I think I do. So we are here, this is where 56 ends. The plan is to do going counterclockwise along the Brookside McCurdy Trail, looping up this way and then going back the Wigwam Trail this way. Should be about 30 miles all in all, I think. Wow, a little windy, but yeah. absolutely beautiful. You ready? Oh, is the fence broken or something? Oh. Come on. Okay, Sierra, let's go. <laughs> Sierra was raring to go, and the excitement of the start of the hike was palpable. So our main goal for today isn't so much getting a specific distance in, it's just getting in and finding a good campsite. We can always get a ton of distance in tomorrow and the day after. I mean, right now I'm feeling great and so glad to get out of the car. beginning of the loop. So we'll be coming back here in two days. In two days. All right, I'm excited. Let's do it. Come on, girl. The open field quickly gave way to a thick pine forest. I think we're both in agreement that lately we've been in a little bit of a funk. And I feel like that's not uncommon these days after the last few years. It's kind of drained from life. It's difficult to kind of exactly pinpoint what it is, but you know, a lot of those things that gave me a lot of excitement before just kind of seem ordinary now, which is not kind of what you want when you move to a place like Colorado. Yeah. You want that excitement and everything you get from being outdoors and in the mountains. You know, I'll say one of those things that kind of pulls me back into it is just spending time with friends. It's very so, helpful. Thanks for coming, Robbie. My pleasure. <laughs> You know, I woke up this morning on the other side of the country, and now we're hiking on a trail out in the mountains. This is not something our bodies are adapted to. No, but I'll say, look, I've hopped on a plane and, and hiked with you guys same day multiple times. I gotta say though, you're about to get some of the best sleep oh, of your life tonight. Looking forward to that. No, 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 oh, Sierra, it's okay, go the other way. Okay. <laughs> the trail was mostly clear, but the occasional down tree didn't slow any of us down. You know, last time we hiked together, out in Colorado, I shamed you for your mustache. And it's here, just with an accompanying beard. That was a good mustache. <laughs> it's good times. Oh. Almost a year ago, too, to the day. Wow. Yeah. Let's go. Too many bugs. So I've got a couple of friends who have done this trail before. And one of the things that really kind of stands out to them is the amount of wildlife. Obviously there's no guarantee that we're gonna see wildlife on this trail, but we're about 20 miles away from the nearest paved road. So there's much more of a chance that we might see here than. Yeah. I feel like it's been a very long time since I've really gotten out into the wilderness. Like the last trip we did was basically in civilization. So yeah, this feels great. This first section of the trail wound through the forest. It would eventually have a decent amount of uphill leading up to Bison Peak. Has the uphill started yet? We're getting that first taste. It's supposed yeah. to be pretty steep. I can taste it. Yeah. 
<laughs> it is kind of interesting today. I feel really good and I'm really enjoying hiking and being outside. But at the same time, I'm also super looking forward to getting to the tent site. Yeah, I think after we get to that top, any campsite we see after that, we should just take. Sounds good. We had hiked for just about an hour now and we're for the most part making good progress. So I'm going uphill and I'm having trouble catching my breath and I'm like, what is wrong with me? And I realize that we are currently at 10,299 feet elevation. And I am not even accustomed to the Denver elevation, let alone higher than that. Tonight will be interesting. <laughs> As we hiked on, we came up to an unexpected sight. We're just kind of walking here. We see these big fences. Huh, it's like almost too big, you know? <laughs> like what giants are you trying to keep out of here? Weird. Maybe some cattle here at some point. There you go. No, I'm just guessing. Oh, you're just guessing? Yeah. As we came to a small clearing in the forest, Robbie spotted something else. We found our first campsite. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, what do you think? If you asked me if I wanted to stop, I'd say yes, but. <laughs> I got a couple more miles in me, I think. I think so too. Plus there's a lot of mosquitoes here. I don't know if there's fewer mosquitoes ahead. <laughs> so Thomas had a bunch of snacks in his house and he said, feel free to take as much as you want. And I took some granola bars and cliff bars and I didn't grab any gummies. Uh-oh, Hiking buddy's got a few gummies up his sleeve. <laughs> gummies for everyone. <laughs> is this campsite or no? Yeah, I think it is. It's got a nice fire pit and everything. Wow. All right, let's try to get a bit more, I guess. Yeah, the sunset's not for another three hours, so. Now, we spotted our first sign of wildlife. What do you right. think? My thought is it's one of two things, either bighorn sheep or elk. I'm gonna guess it's elk. It seems a little bit too big for bighorn sheep. So we'll keep an eye out for some elk. So what do you think? Dude, I know that you didn't know exactly what this place was gonna be like ahead of time, but you did good. This is, this is my ideal landscape. I'll talk about him a little later, but this isn't just my idea. But I did peek a little bit, and as soon as I saw that it was dog friendly and I saw what the environment was gonna be like, I was like, I'm done searching. Definitively, this is where we're gonna go, because Robbie's gonna love it. I think it gets even better. <laughs> and I'm, I'm willing to bet my hat on it. <laughs> Suddenly the wind just completely stopped. Man, this is, this is so peaceful. Whenever I do any of these long days of travels where I'm actually flying, getting, driving to a trailhead and actually hiking, it's not exactly a runner's high, but it's more like a travel high. I feel like you just get to a campsite, you're doing everything and you're really proud of all the work that you've put in for yourself today. It makes you feel like you're actually, uh, you know, earning your views. What do you think? When I'm in the mood for travel, I love it. I love that sense of having gone somewhere. Like when I play Minecraft, mm -hmm. I don't like building. I don't like collecting stuff. I like walking in a straight line and seeing how lost I can get. <laughs> so interesting. So interesting how we're all wired differently. Yeah. Algonquin and Maine vibes, but without the lake. Yeah, yeah. Interesting environment. I was gonna say, doesn't this look like a moose trail or a deer trail or something here? Oh, it's gotta be, gotta be. You can just almost see the trail here. The trail had been relatively flat thus far, but we could see signs of the uphill climb ahead of us in the distance. We had been hiking for a couple of hours now, so we stopped for a quick snack. 
Oh my god, I am kind of starving actually. Sierra, come here. Good girl. On one hand, happy to sit down and eat. On the other hand, we gotta make this fast before we get eaten. The mosquitoes are not messing around out no, here. No, they are not. I feel like this is their prime time. It's like not too hot, not too cold, and we're like in the lowest part of the whole trail where all the water kind of accumulates too. So lucky them, unlucky us. Mmm, my god. Mmm, hurt my eye. All right, every man for himself. <laughs> Somebody's enjoying herself. She's an otter at heart. She, she loves the water. There's a truly incredible amount of mosquitoes out here. The good news, this is where the uphill begins and it doesn't stop okay. for another uh, mile and a half. Okay. Ready? I think so. I think I can, I think I can handle it. The sun continued to set, and we once again entered a thicker section of the forest. It's pretty crazy how as soon as the sun goes down and you enter the forest, totally different feeling. It makes you just want to immediately set up camp and not do anything <laughs> for the rest of the day. Especially since the uphill has now started in earnest. Ah. you with a snowball, but I don't think I'm getting any snow here. What is? I was so confused walking up because I was like, what is that? <laughs> this is wow. Straight up ice. Man. A plane soared above us and it reminded me once again that I had woken up on the other side of the country this morning. I'm definitely feeling the altitude now. Got a little bit of a headache brewing, so we probably want to find the next campsite so we can rest up. Fortunately, we saw that others had already set up camp in this area, so we were sure to find a spot ourselves. And now, there was one last stream crossing for the day, which we took note of for filling up on water in the morning. So behind me here, somebody's tenting. Somebody's tenting over there too, and there's a bunch of flat, empty space up here, so there's probably some more campsites. This looks super promising up here. Let let's you... go up ahead, Yeah. and then let's turn left. I'll let you check it out. Okay. All right, this looks promising. Might be nothing. Oh, nope, here we go. There's Good a, to go. Is there a fire pit? Yep. Oh my, oh my goodness, look at this place. <laughs> looks good. I think we can have a fire tonight, dude. Yes. Yes. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Thank God. I was really starting to feel the elevation, so we wasted no time in getting our shelters set up. Not to mention it was prime mosquito feeding season. There are a catastrophic amount of mosquitoes right now. Yeah. It's like when the wind blows, it kind of blows them away for a second. As soon as it stops, they just come in full We're force. Back. We gotta scramble. Yeah, are you, uh, are you even putting your rain fly in right now? Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. yeah, I think I might just grab my backpack, some snacks, and. Oh my God, I don't even need a sleeping bag or a sleeping mat. This is my life now. Good girl. Oh, good God. How's it over at Casa, Casa de Thomas? Casa de Thomas. Several mosquitoes still in here. Oh, I forgot your new trail name is Tom D. <laughs> <laughs> this morning when we got coffee, on the receipt, for some reason, it said Tom D. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Hey, I got 10,000 steps today. <laughs> Man, minimum. <laughs> Thomas already knows this, but I might be down for the count for the rest of the night. <laughs> oh, the elevation is getting me. We're currently at 10,830 feet. Last time I was this high, I had an incident in the tent. <laughs> 
which we shall not speak of. Oh man, I think I'm out for the count. Okay, oh, fatality. The first night on Mount Whitney and last night were the only two times I can remember that I've been camping and thought, I don't know if I can continue. But fortunately, both times, when I woke up, I felt much better. Good. Thank you for putting my rainfly on, by the way. I have a vague memory of you doing that. <laughs> Here, come on. Dude, I fell asleep so immediately yesterday. <laughs> I just like closed my eyes, immediate sleep. Like if I made any movement, my head started pounding. I was like, nope, don't move. <laughs> no. You feel better now? I feel much better now. Good. I don't know if I feel 12 miles of hiking good, but we'll find out. We'll find out. Just ride Sierra. <laughs> You have been chosen. She does not want to spend any more time with me. I'm also happy to report there was no tent incident last night. <laughs> I was just like this the whole night. <laughs> Feels really good, actually. <laughs> How cold do you think it is? This is somewhere in the 30s. I don't think it's below freezing. Yeah. Upper 30s, maybe? Pretty close. The chill helped us get packed up quickly, and we headed out. Okay, first task of the day is to go back a little bit to a stream, fill up on water. There might be streams up ahead, but the stream is really close back here, so we don't want to risk it. We'll just fill up first and then get on our way. The pond is a little frozen. Currently we're at 10,900 feet. The highest point we'll get to today is 11,900. So we just have about a thousand to go straight up this morning. You know, as we're hiking up this, this hill here to our left, we can see some beautiful rocks on this mountain. I'm pretty sure that's Bison Peak over there, about 12,000 feet, which is kind of funny because usually when I think of mountains that high, I think of mountains that are already like above the tree line and just pretty much rock at that point. But uh, it's still pretty green and lush up there. And those are kind of atypical rock formations for that type of mountain, almost uh, more, more bouldery than anything. We won't be going up to any of the peaks today, right? No. We're gonna go up pretty high, but not on the actual yeah, peaks. We're not gonna go up that high, but we're gonna be Close, I think. I'm starting to feel that uphill a little bit. Me too. I was really worried last night that I wasn't gonna be able to do this today. I'm knock on wood, but so far so good. I actually feel pretty good. This is tough, but I'm feeling energized. Robbie, I think it's fair to say between you and I, Sierra's got enough energy for both of us. Practically pulling me up the mountain. That sun is nice. Oh, fantastic. All right, junction time. We're going to Brookside McCurdy to the left. What's this way then? You can get down to a different road and that way. Oh, okay. Is there no overlook or anything? Uh, there might be. Wanna check it out? It's still kind of hard to see, but I think if we go this way, we might see a cool view over here. I think this is worth the extra 30 steps or so. I think so. I think this is uh, something we'll be seeing a lot, hopefully.
It was a nice view. But now, it was time to make the steep ascent up to the foot of Bison Peak. So this whole loop is going to be 28 miles. We did four miles yesterday, which means we can break it up into 12 miles today and 12 miles tomorrow. That's pretty ambitious. The longest I've ever done in a single day is 16. You know, I'll be honest, I think we got an early start. You won't be getting that much plan identification. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> which cuts down. That would literally shave off two hours, I think, of any <laughs> hike. 1.1 <laughs> miles so far, so. You'd be surprised, I think. What, yeah, I think, get, I think what you could accomplish. I'm, I'm ready to be surprised. <laughs> this is really tough. <laughs> Look at that, dude. In the distance, we started to get a fantastic view of the collegiate mountain range. I suppose one nice thing about these intense uphills is that they're really hard, but they don't last that long. <laughs> We're now at 11,500 feet. I think we have about 400 more to go. 11,900 is our peak, basically. So do you have any guesses on what those mountains are? I think the two tall ones there with the snow on the top, to the right, I think that's Evans and Bierstadt. And then right in front of us to see a, a pointy one right kind of poking its head up. I think that's either Gray's or Tories or both. And then over here, it's tough to say, but I think that's Lincoln, Democrat, Bross. And then behind it somewhere is Quandry. And you've done Quandry now. I've done Quandry, Democrat, Lincoln, Bross, Bierstadt. I've not done Gray's, Tories, and Mount Evans. I'm assuming that's the highest we'll go. I'm hoping it's not much higher than that. We're running out of land for it to be any higher. <laughs> okay, Thomas has just informed me we have three switchbacks left. This first one is number one. Two more, and we can eat some lunch. Dude, I am so hungry. Whoa, even Sierra's impressed. My goodness. Back one. Somebody camped up there last night. Almost there, just a little more. And now, switch back number two. Not bad, not bad. Incredible, extremely strong winds. It's a nice tailwind right now though. That's nice. We did it. Maybe we can find a rock. Some shelter. Yeah. yeah. The wind is blowing directly behind us, pushing us forward. It's super nice. You can see they've got like cairns everywhere because there's no trail anymore. Yo, this might be <laughs> one of the coolest places I've ever seen. So apparently those two are going to the top of Mount Bison, which is that peak right there. I'm kind of glad we're not. Yeah, I'm ready I for a respite. Yeah, do you want to take some shelter behind those or those? Behind uh, those. I okay. think we got a nice view of the Mount Bison and we can watch them go up. Okay. Are you ready? Yep. Yeah. 
Wow, this is the type of landscape that I dream of. Love I this. I told you earlier when you are like, this is what I dream of, I said, I think it's gonna get better. Yeah. And this is exactly what I was talking about here. Open fields, big rocks, beautiful views. It had Robbie written all over it. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Oh my God, yes. Ultimate landscape. Oh, we have a contender for my new favorite place ever. <laughs> when you look out at this, it's just possibility. Yeah. Just look how inviting that is. This is gonna be the picnic of a lifetime, man. Oh, yeah, let's, oh yeah, let's, let's get right in here. Oh, there's other people here. <laughs> well, we'll not disturb them, we'll go over here. Wow, look at that rock right there. I don't know, I wanna kinda get on the other side of this rock so we can watch it. Wow, this is incredible, man. Oh my goodness. Look at this. First things first, I gotta eat. Snack. Get some snacks here. Get some water. I didn't think it would be so cold. The sun is kind of nice, but I think it'll warm up. It's already starting to warm up a bit, but still. I know you've said that you feel like you've lost a little bit of that sense of wonder, but I mean, look, at that, that is like a rock spire out that of is. nowhere. <laughs> you know, I think when we were younger, all we knew was the Midwest and coming to places like these and doing this now for the last 15 years, wow. there isn't as much that takes you takes your breath away as it did back in like 2009. What I still kind of have is coming across unexpected places. Mm, love that feeling. And I knew that it was going to be rocky and bouldery on top of here, but I didn't realize it was going to be like this. Yeah. This is otherworldly. You do not see landscapes like this very often. I think another thing that made those early backpacking trips so memorable is there was that sense of danger. You're doing something you've never done before going into a situation where you can't just like immediately evacuate, you know? I mean, we're still in those situations though. Yeah, but we've done it so much time, you have experience. You know when to actually be concerned and when not to be concerned. But on the whole, I feel like I'm still wowed by environments like this. And just in general, getting out there, I'm always excited to do it. I would really like to get out to a place like this and not have any time limit. Mm. We get to this and we're like, this is awesome. We're spending the night here. We're gonna spend the rest of the afternoon just exploring these rocks, mine in the sun. When we did Yosemite, oh, sorry, Yellowstone the first time in 2009, that was the first time I backpacked was with you guys out there. And it was only maybe a mile and a half away from the car. <laughs> it was, yeah. But I mean, talk about like no time limit. We just went down there. We were next to Phelps Lake, jumping into that, that lake from that big jumping rock. We, that's all we did. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the thing that I really still yearn for, is that sense of being lost in the wilderness. I wanna go out without a timetable, without a destination. All right, it's the Thomas Classic. Ding, <laughs> ding. Are you not having any gummies? No, gummies are for afternoon. Okay. You got all your procedures for your food. <laughs> Man, that was good. Wow, I'm so glad I didn't have to bail. Zen, you got off the plane and I threw you up in the mountains. So you're like, oh. I went from like 500 feet to 30,000 feet to 5,000 feet to 10,000 feet. My body was very confused. <laughs> okay, that's your usual adventure archive experience. Just in reverse though. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's why if you watch the Maryland episode at Harper's Ferry, and you're wondering, why won't Thomas shut up? Why does he have so much energy? <laughs> it's because I'm like, oh my God, I got so much oxygen. <laughs> it's a real thing. My dinner last night was going to be beef stew. Remember to always remove the desiccant. Yes. Tom D, Tom Desiccant. <laughs> Tom Desiccant. Dude, this looks good. Oh man, look at that. Oh, this is gonna be amazing. Oh. More in there, more in there. Oh, come on. While Robbie prepped his meal, I decided to use the last of some disappointing coffee packets I had bought. It smells good. Yeah, 
It always does. It's just then it tastes as it ends up tasting like coffee flavored water. Man, you want it strong. <laughs> I mean, last time it was like coffee flavored water. I told you. One of those isn't enough. No, I don't think it is. I don't think I can see more than like a centimeter from the <laughs> surface. This thing is so dark. That actually tastes like coffee. Mm. Yep. Nice. Oh, tastes good though. Wow, it's still not strong. No, no, not strong, but tasty. Yeah. Tastes terrific. And now, the beef stew I hadn't eaten for last night's dinner was ready to go. You know what's wild to me about Colorado? Is you can see so much of the state on top of any mountain. Mm. Like, I've been to the top of that mountain. When I was on top of that mountain, I could see at the top of another mountain mm. I was on. Mm. And they're like an hour and a half away from each mm -hmm. other. I can look at Pike's Peak over there. If I were to get probably to the top of one of these mountains, you could see uh, the 14ers near Vail, mm. which is another two hours away. You can finish that up. <clears throat> Let me know how you enjoy it or don't enjoy it. Mm. There's like potatoes in here. Yeah. Thanks, man. That was very cash money of you. We continued resting in the shade and looked over the progress we had made thus far. And since there wasn't a cloud in the sky, I applied a little sunscreen before we got going. I look like a giant. See, so are you ready? Let's go. Our trail is roughly in that direction. We're gonna head over there and find the trail again. But first, we gotta investigate this rock. This looks like it could be a monument at a national park or something. Right. I don't know who I heard this from, but I heard that you can go bouldering around here. It seems like a great thing to boulder right there. <laughs> Yo, this thing is massive. Oh, it's cold. Oh, it's freezing. Ah. Oh, wow. Wow, it's really cold. Yeah, let's get out of here. Let's do a loop and then head out. Sounds good. We marveled at the impressive sight that was next to us when the two we saw earlier came back from their summiting of Mount Bison. And the time it took them to get up and down, we just ate lunch and did nothing. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go back to the trail. I'm pretty sure we can just go straight this way, get back to it. I'm gonna check out this snow. It's blinding. Oh, it's soft. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Ah! Oh, my hat! Yeah, pick it up! Fetch! Come on, let's get it! Good girl! Good girl! Oh, serenity now! Serenity now! Alright, we should be just back to the trail. There's a cairn right there. Looks like that's the trail. Okay, so mostly downhill from here on out. Not a moment too soon! Look those views too! The trail here was easy. The views were incredible. And Robbie was really feeling it. You know, they've got runners high. I think I've got a beef stew high. It feels so good now. Maybe it's a downhill high. I can't be off. Beef stew downhill high. <laughs> This is a delightful trail. Just full of delight and wonder. Got views over here, views over here, views over there. That's more than two scoops of raisins. It's at least four scoops.
as we crested a bit of a hill, the view reminded me of something. Doesn't it seem like there could be like a Bacoblin fort up there from Tears of the Kingdom? You just yes. run down here on your horse. One thing that's super striking about environments like this is that they look designed. Yeah. Like they look like a landscaper came in and said, oh, a little rock here, good. Make this patch clear so people can get a good view. All right, ready? Wow, you can tell we're getting lower because the wind has stopped. Yes, it is. It's time to shed these jackets. So right now we're at mile seven of the 28 mile loop. We can get to mile 16 today, another nine miles. I feel like that puts us in a pretty decent position for tomorrow. Yeah, I think we can do better than 16 miles. Really? I think so. Ambitious. I mean, it's 11 o'clock. So that like another eight hours of sunlight. Yeah, but do I have eight hours of walking in? <laughs> yes, you do. Sierra does. We now entered another section dotted with lots of large boulders and rock spires. We were just up there and we could see this rock from the distance. I did not realize we'd be going right by it. Wow. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Wow. The landscape continued to inspire as we passed a couple of hikers heading the opposite direction. All right, Thomas is setting the pace for us a bit here, making sure we can actually get enough miles done today. This feels a lot more like the deserts out west than kind of the typical places that we've been to in Colorado. Does this feel more like the deserts out west to you? Kind of. Almost a little bit like uh, uh, Big Bend, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So typically, would it not look this green? You guys got a lot of rain the last couple of weeks, right? I think uh, it's tough to say because up in the mountains, you know, it tends to be a little greener, but uh, I'm a little too new to the air just to speak accurately on it. But I can say if you go to Denver, it's much greener in Denver than it is usually this time of year. Huh. I guess this is green, but it's kind of a, a muted green. Thomas has informed me that we actually still weren't done with the uphill. And that explains my current condition. <laughs> we got some coming. Ah. We'll let them go first. <laughs> Compared to our usual mileage on our trips, we had already hiked a full day. And though it felt like the hike should be winding down soon, we were only just getting started. We continued on a series of small ups and downs in the exposed section of the trail as the sun really started to warm up. So at first I thought we were gonna have to go up there, but no. fortunately we're going around. It's mostly flat up, like some small ups and downs, but uh, then it's gonna be a big down after that. Ready? Yep. Let's go. Sure you don't want to just camp here? I want to do uh, 20 miles tomorrow? Miles tomorrow. <laughs> Damn, we do have so much left. Like yeah. either direction, getting back to the car is no joke. Nope, but you got it. we got this. I was glad one of us was optimistic because the burst of energy I felt in the morning by now was long since evaporated by the uphill and unrelenting sun. Let's take a break before we get to the downhill. So maybe at the end of this section yeah. up here. In the shade, if that's all right. Yeah. You know that that old joke about Skyrim, where it's like, you see those mountains in the distance? You can go there. That's what this trail is. See those rocks in the distance? 
You're going to go there. That's a, a main quest, not a side quest. <laughs> This might be the best view of the mountains yet. You can see it stretch all the way across the horizon. In the haze of the horizon, we once again saw a well-known 14er. Incredible. Isn't that pretty cool? I've probably said this a couple times, but that's Pike's Peak right up there. So have you been up there? I have not, no. My dad and I were gonna go, but it's this year we've had so much snow that the uh, road to the top has been snowed in. You can actually drive to the top. Now, if I'm not mistaken, this is gonna begin our downhill portion. Maybe one more little uphill, and then it's a very long downhill, which I mean, I'm looking forward to. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. We still got a lot of ways to go here. We're not quite halfway done with the day, but uh, I think we needed some snacks, get a morale boost, get some shade, and uh, get ready to conquer the next 12, seven miles. Ooh. We had hiked roughly about five miles, and this shade was a welcome relief from the completely exposed trail we had been on all morning. I think it's fair to say morale is low. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I can offer you in these trying times? Gummy? Would you, would you like a gummy? <laughs> Have a gummy. In these trying on, times. On the house. In these trying times. That's our new motto. <laughs> yeah, we should dink it. Uh -uh. Why are these so good? I couldn't tell you, dude. Thank you quickly. I'm like straddling this. <laughs> Now it's in my lap. <laughs> <laughs> I think now it's more of a mental game than anything. Mm. Trick your body into forgetting it's tired. Do you want a hiking stick? No. Okay, Thomas wants us to zoom downhill. Physically, I might be incapable, and mentally, I might also be in Gable, but I will give it my best shot. Okay, well, now that we've gotten moving, I actually do feel like that break helped a lot. I feel like I got some energy inside of me. Wow, this place is really incredible. It's like Vasquez Rocks. The rocks continued to be an inspiring visual as we hiked, and the inspiration was welcome. Though the uphill was gradual, it continued to stretch on. Now, the trail took us right next to many of the boulders we had seen from the distance. Look at the size of these rocks. So smooth too. Almost seems like this is like the land of giants or something. It's just little pebbles for a giant. The end of this long uphill was finally in sight, but with each step, it still didn't seem any closer. This is just brutal. The downhill is so tantalizingly close, but just this last bit of uphill. Oh, I've got nothing left in the tank for uphill. The only thing I got left is downhill. <laughs> okay. This has to be the downhill. I was gonna say, if it's a down, it's not downhill. I'm going. I'm turning around. You're going all the way back uphill. Okay, here it is. It's downhill time, baby. Okay, let's camp here. What if I tried to make you camp here? <laughs> How mad would you be? Wow, the trail feels impossibly good now. Nice, steady downhill. Very smooth path. Okay, I think I can. I can persevere now. I can do it, Thomas. All right. I can do 12 more miles. We now descended back into the forest. We finally got some shade. This is a completely foreign concept to this trail thus far. I, I'm like 60% sure one of the reasons we were so drained was because of the exposure. 
Oh, yeah, you're right. You're yeah. Right. After cruising through the nice shady downhill, we came to a small clearing before the next junction. I gotta at least take a look at this campsite. Oh yeah, yeah, that looks great. I would love to stay here, but we're only nine miles into the loop. So if we don't get to at least 16 today, we're gonna have more than 12 miles to do tomorrow. Oh, I wanna stay so badly, man. I know. I know. Hey, this is a shortcut. We can go this way though. McCurdy Park, Brookside, McCurdy. Oh, so you know that's McCurdy Mountain right there. Did we know that? No, we did not. I'll take the lead. All right, here we go. Let's go, bro. One thing I do really love about doing these long distances is that the satisfaction when you finish is unparalleled. And the reality is we're gonna forget about 80% of it anyways. That's we'll true. We'll only remember the fun parts. That is true. I'm having fun right now. You having fun? I'm having more fun than I was an hour ago. <laughs> Same. <laughs> this downhill has significantly improved my morale. Woo! Very nice. Now, with our spirits high, we took a minute to fill up our water for the hike ahead. We're now on a steady downhill, and the high peaks we had spent all morning on were just a view in the distance. We're about 10,300 feet right now. We're gonna get as low as 8,900 feet today. This is pretty much the highest part of the trail for the rest of the trip. See that, that rock up there? Oh, man, that's like even bigger than the last one we saw. Yep, I won't say it. <laughs> okay, my morale is hitting a low again. I think this seems like a good spot to take a quick break. Broke my spine on this train. Dehydrated. I feel like I'm not a hunch warm right here. Her paw is so wet. Yeah. <laughs> well, my morale is boosted. But my energy is not. We're about to make out. <laughs> Our energy levels were definitely dwindling, but the shady little resting spot did us a lot of good. Just about 2.10 p.m. We've got about three miles left if we want to do a full 12 miles today. Uh, I've already hit my limit though, so we're into overtime now. We're gonna see how much Thomas is willing to pay me to keep going. Because the next good campsite I see, it's gonna be really hard to tear me away from that. I could see Thomas up there, <laughs> just, just silently fuming. <laughs> I'm going to say, for the record, I'm very much okay stopping at that camp spot. Uh, okay. Next campsite? Not next one. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't want to do 15 miles tomorrow. Okay, we're officially below 10,000 feet. 9,960. Maybe I'll get a second wind now, because I can actually get enough oxygen. I don't think we're low enough for that, actually. Not by a long shot. We continued heading down the side of the mountain, going through many sharp switchbacks. So we've been descending for, man, a couple hours now. Basically, we've just been having this in the view the whole time. And I don't know where we're gonna end up, but I'm assuming just at the bottom of this valley here. I know that we're gonna follow a river at some point. I just don't know if that's today. I think that's probably tomorrow, but I'm ready to get to that campsite and just uh, yeah, tuck her out. We definitely picked the right direction though, because this downhill is never ending. And if we had gone the other direction, it would have been a never ending uphill. The uphill we did actually, all things considered, was not bad at all. And the views more than made up for the uphill. In the end, it all evens out. Where we started, we ended. And where we end, we started. 
So the elevation gain is still going to be the same as the the decline. True. Not to put a damper on things. It was still switchback after switchback as we continued down the side of the mountain. So the upside and the downside of these parts of the trail is that once you get on them, you have to get off if you want to camp anywhere because there's nowhere to camp. It's just all too steep. So the downside is you can't camp anywhere, but the upside is, is that it forces your hand so you really keep moving. I'm sure there'll be some excellent campsites down there. All right, I'm not waterproof, so I'm gonna take this side. If it's stable. Seems pretty stable. Nice. Finally, we found a sign that we were nearing the end of our descent. It's a pond over here. It looks like a mosquito paradise. Yes, it does. Come on. We really need a campsite sooner rather than later. This is getting pretty rough. Looks cool though. So, where did we come from? Those rocks? Those rocks? Or those rocks? I think somewhere beyond those rocks. You know, I am yeah. so disoriented right now. Usually I've got a pretty good sense of where things are, but genuinely, I just know we went down that hill. But, uh, yeah. yeah we were way up there, right? Yeah, we were as high as you could see. I know that you would probably prefer to keep going, but I really think if we take like an hour or even like a 45 minute break, that would actually do us a lot of good. Yeah, if you're not feeling good, then let's, uh, let's find a place in the shade and take a break. Yeah, yeah let's do it. Another headache from the elevation had started to creep up on me, so we hiked a bit further to find a shady spot to rest. How about a little nook back there, some shade? Did you call it? That was good. I think it was good. Yeah, maybe, maybe some shoes off would help too. Cut around my feet. <laughs> I don't think it'll help your morning. We set a timer for 30 minutes and recuperated in the shade. I think that was a pretty good rest. You feeling good? No, but I'm feeling better. <laughs> Telling you, you want some caffeine? And there's still about like 100 milligrams of this left. You did demoralize me a little bit when you told me we're not even halfway through the 28 miles. <laughs> Whatever, dog. All right, Sierra, you ready to go? Okay, roughly three miles left. Apparently we've got a big stream crossing coming up. We've heard varying degrees of deepness online. So it could be anywhere from chest high to calf high. So we'll see. Three more miles, we're rested. Let's do it. What are you? We just took a break at this crappy little hole, and what do we see here? Well, I feel like a horse's patoot. Behind you. Yeah, I saw it. <laughs> Pretty amazing. Are these trees with white bark the ones that like to be near water? I think you're thinking of sycamores. So American sycamores that you'll find all over like the Midwest and everything, you can usually like use them as a barometer to find water. I'm not necessarily saying that these don't grow next to the water, but these are aspen. These are quaking aspen. Mm -hmm. You can take a look at the leaves and you'll see just like the leaves shimmer and quake. In the fall, they turn into a brilliant color of orange and red. Well, we passed two people who went through the stream crossing and they said it was about hip deep. So I guess we'll see. They said it's really short though, like eight, 10 feet. <laughs> but first, there would be lots of steep uphill to get through.
Oh God, no moss, no moss. Tell you what, this isn't the definition of type two fun. I don't know what it's gonna be. <laughs> So two other hikers told us we just did that ascent. Now there's a little bit of a descent and then the stream crossing. It's kind of too bad we're so pooped and have to keep moving because we can't stop and appreciate this incredible view. I got a hypothesis that uh, once we go uh, below this deep, in that cold, frigid water, we'll suddenly be very awake. <laughs> Find some newfound energy. As we continued descending, we passed yet another pair of hikers who had just finished the stream crossing. They said they are still soaked, waist deep. It's good to be six foot three. We'll see if it's actually waist deep for me. <laughs> and it wouldn't be long before we found out. Oh. Okay, that's pretty deep. It looks uh, totally manageable, but definitely waist deep. Yikes, yeah. Uh, I say we scout. I'll let you scout. Okay. This looks promising. Well, this might be less deep, but it's longer, and I'm not sure what it would be like on the other side. Hmm. There's definitely a shallower section up ahead, but it's wider, and on the other side, it's a bunch of stones, so it might be worse for Sierra. So. Yeah, there is nothing left to do but prep our gear and cross. Good girl. Good girl, come on. Swim, swim, swim. Good girl. Good girl. Yeah, thank you. Oh, it's cold. All right. Here we go. Let's go. Enjoy it while it lasts. Woo. Ah. Oh, it is cold. That is very cold. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sierra, for checking on me. Okay, come on. Woo! Initial uh, reactions. That feels really good now, but it was very cold then. <laughs> oh man, not bad, not bad. Well, you know, all in all, I think that was just what we needed at just so. the right moment. I feel very awake, and they said that there's a campsite coming up just another mile or two, so. I am all for it. You get some white thighs here for me. Sorry about that. Actually, it turns out there's a campsite right here. So we've got this one in the bag if we need it. Ideally, we'd like to do at least two more miles today. But if we go two miles, we're gonna get to a big uphill and there's no guarantee that there would be any campsites on the uphill. I don't know, yeah, we'll play it by ear. You ready to go for a walk in with Ranger Tom today? Yeah, let me take this. This is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I'm blinded. <laughs> no, look at that. Okay, you can go. You can go. It's a campsite here. I'll let you make these calls, man. We'll try to get as far as we can before the uphill starts. And if it looks like we need to turn back, we'll just turn back. Oh man, I don't know. This is really good though. Seems there is no shortage of campsites in this area, so. Let's just pay attention to what the environment starts to look like. And if it looks like it's gonna be less and less likely there'll be more campsites, we come back. My, 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 Robbie, how the tables have turned. It was if not this brutal. This campsite is in at least 30% better than that last one. All right, everybody turn around. <laughs> Sierra, turn around. We now entered a gulch filled with even more incredible rock structures. What is this landscape? Whoa! Down below was the same stream we had just crossed minutes ago. Where does it go? I feel like this is the end of it. Probably goes back into this cave. 
Wow. Yo. This is incredible. Man, I don't think I've ever seen anything like this. No. In person. We continued looking for a campsite as we scrambled through the rocks. Hope this is the trail. Oh, ah. If there's no campsites up ahead, this is gonna be a <laughs> rough hike back. All that energy I just got back is depleted. Same. Totally oh. gone. Yeah. Sierra's the only one who's like, okay, I can keep going. Good girl. That last campsite is seeming like a better and better idea. I'm not going back. I don't want to do this all over again anymore. Yeah, good point. It feels like the longest day of my life. I'm right there with you. I walk, woke up with sunshine. It is still... Five more hours of sunshine. <laughs> Come on, baby. Give me that campsite. There are some people up ahead. I really hope that's not the only campsite. It wasn't the only campsite, but this one was also occupied. Okay, there's a guy tenting just back there, but he said there's a pretty cool cave right here. Get a quick look at this. Whoa, that, this must be the other side. We got back on the trail. And then we made it to the campsite we had seen in the distance. Two hikers there told us they'd scoped a bit further up the trail and hadn't seen any other campsites. But well, we have decided to risk it. There is another valley we can get to. We got to go up a ways and then down a ways. But well, we've come this far. Right down there. What? Do you see a fire ring down there? Oh, I shirt? do. Yeah. How okay. do we get down there? Let's find out. I'm just going to rough it through this tall grass and then I will scout and I will find a good way for you guys to get down. Awesome. Or if that's the only way to get down, then so be it. <laughs> Yo, there's a path. Come this way. Well, the trail ends here. Yeah, if you can just come straight down. All right. Yo, snake. Oh, look at that. Thanks, Aaron. Hey, thanks, Andrew. Oh, you're welcome. And now with all of us safely at the bottom of the hill, we had finally made it to a campsite. Woo, pretty good. Fireplace, sleeping area. I think we should just set up the sleeping area. Oh yes. Nothing else. It might not be the hardest hike we've done, but I think this is the hardest we've hiked. <laughs> yeah, 14 miles of walking according to my watch. Oh, God. Not hungry, I'm not thirsty. I don't know what's going on with me. That's called heat stroke. <laughs> Glad you saw this one. Saved us quite a bit of walking. I have now, uh, those two are no longer my friends. They gave us false, false despair, when in reality there was hope. If you're watching this afterwards, we'll remember you. I'm getting in, and I'm resting. Rest in Virginia. It had been a long day, but the relief of getting to camp washed over us. Well, today was tough, but I definitely feel way better than I did yesterday, at least. Good. Oh, oh, and tomorrow we'll just gun it. Now that we had caught our breath, we did a little bit of snacking before dinner. Thomas did a little tent to tent transfer and gave me some fruit snacks. Thank you, Thomas. I was about to say, <laughs> Thomas, you don't have a lot of good ideas, but. <laughs> Fruit snacks are one of the best. <laughs> got him! I got you, Thomas. So, Thomas, have you been thinking about growing another mustache? <laughs> when you get back home, are you gonna are you gonna shave off your beard <laughs> and just with the mustache? I might. We'll see. Depends how the rest of this trip goes. Actually, no, I'm definitely not going to do this. <laughs> the fruit snacks were great, but now I needed a real meal. You're not going to eat? 
We'll see. I'm not really feeling that hungry. I snacked a lot once we got back. Homestyle chicken and rice. That well, looks really good. How are you guys doing over there? We're relaxing. Sierra's asleep. I'm chilling, literally, just trying to cool myself. It's getting a little colder, doesn't? Don't you feel? Oh yeah, yeah, a little bit. This is an uh, amazing trail. In fact, I've had a headache this entire trip because of the elevation. But if I didn't, I probably would have been even more enthusiastic about this trail. Because, and I probably would have been like, "This is the best trail I've ever been on." The variety, the landscape, like we're, we're literally next to some like African savanna rocks or something. It right looks now. like Pride Rock over there. Just incredible amount of variety and just the exact type of landscapes I love. Like we, we were next to like some big rock spire in a nicely manicured lawn, just <laughs> having lunch with mountains in the distance. This place is. I'm glad you like it. Hey, I got to give a shout out though to Kevin Fetty. And he said, if you guys ever come out to Colorado and you're looking for an easy hike, you should do Lost Creek Wilderness. Wait, he said an easy hike? I think he said an easy hike. Well, actually, I was saying that earlier to you, that if we had done this over three nights, yeah. no problem. Yeah. Two nights is a little rough for our style of hiking. But yeah, Kevin, wow. Seriously, Kevin, thank you. Uh, I want to also I say- I love this place. <laughs> and if you want to see his version of this hike oh. you can go there and watch his version of this hike too he I wonder actually how he did that stream crossing i don't know i think it might have been later in the year uh but he actually saw a moose on his mm. so if you want to go see a moose check out his video we have not seen a moose no no moose. okay and now my meal is done hey hey look at that <laughs> don't feel like you can Mm. Man, that is really good. Whoa, this is a top tier. Yo, I don't know if I'm just hungry, but this is incredibly good. Are you sure you don't want to eat your dinner? Man, this is good. You want a bite? <laughs> it was just before 8 p.m. and the sun still hadn't set, but we were definitely done for the night. When is too early to go to bed? Or can we go to bed anytime? You know, the sun isn't hitting us directly, so I think we can go to bed anytime. I just gotta feed the dog and take care of some business. I will we'll not skip be. over the part where you told me what that means. <laughs> we'll not be expanding. <laughs> All right. Good night. Good night. I don't want to get up. Um, the toys are us, kid. Huh? I don't want to get up, but I can't fall asleep. <laughs> Best sleep you've ever had, you think? Feels like it. It's the sleeping mat and the pillow. I'm almost angry at myself for going this long in my life without bringing a pillow to sleep on. I had a, uh, a C minus sleep. The first six hours were fantastic, and then two more bouts of sleep that were mediocre. Today we have a solid 14 miles to do, is that correct? That's yeah, correct. Ready for the longest hike of your backpacking life? No! <laughs> back on the main trail, 14 miles. I think we were too tired to realize it yesterday, but this is incredible.
The hike this morning was steep, but our spirits were also high. So my understanding is that elevation is difficult because there's less oxygen. You can measure that with your blood oxygen level. And yesterday I was at 88%, but according to my watch, today I'm at 95%, which might explain how much better I feel today. Then again, it could have been the beautiful landscape surrounding us. The hike today was going well, and the morning was still cool as we wound up and down through the rocks and trees. I don't know if I've had a nicer morning hike than today. Full of energy, the weather's perfect. Pretty soon we should be hitting the lowest point in the whole trail, besides maybe that stream crossing we did earlier. From there it's just up, and then down, and then up, and then down, and then flat. <laughs> let's go girl. Here, come on, let's go. We just hit one mile and we've hiked for 30 minutes. We might actually be able to hit two miles an hour today. If you've watched our Harper's Ferry episode by now, the entire length of that trail is what we're gonna do in just one day today. We broke that up into three days. We broke that up in three days. Maybe it's slightly less. That was 15 miles, this is 14 miles, but we're at a higher altitude and a lot more elevation gain today. Yeah. All right. Let's go, dog. No rest for the weekend. After cresting a good amount of uphill, we finally began descending into a forest with a couple of campsites. I mean, we could have never known, but the campsites down here are fantastic. There's some people back there, and this one looks like a awesome campsite. There's really no shortage of camping spots around here, it seems. Yeah. I think the reason we were so concerned is because the trail is so long, each like little hill looked like it was just a little hill, when in reality it's probably about a 30 minutes of hiking per, per bump. The many changes in elevation we saw in our GPS app had us worried there wouldn't be many places to camp, but those worries obviously proved to be unfounded. Okay, right now is going to begin a very long section of pretty steep uphill, as steep or steeper than anything we've done so far. We are at 8,960 feet right now. We will see how high we get. I think it's, we go up above 10,000, right? Yeah. Okay, feeling much better today at least. Good weather too. Well, as near as I can tell from our GPS app, this is a 38% grade. Which I don't know what that means exactly. It's 100% straight up. It turns out a 38% grade means for every 100 feet we go forward, we go 38 feet up. It also turns out a 38% grade is quite difficult. I think we got another 800 feet. Of the uphill? I think so, yeah. Oh, that's it? And we're getting, topping out at 10,100. We're at 9,200 right now. Oh man. We reached a small portion of flat ground to take a quick break and give Sierra some water. After a bit more climbing, we reached the junction of McCurdy Park Trail and Goose Creek Trail. All right, junction time. And today, we'd be heading north on Goose Creek Trail. Well, a lot left to go, but still doing pretty well. We're doing two miles an hour still, so. That's great. Pretty decent for us. We camped way down in that valley. We've come way up. Whew. Well, looks like we're at 10,000 feet. So we got maybe another 100, 150 more feet left. If we've made it this far in the overall trip, we have every physical capability to get to the end. It's just what can you do to kind of push those self-doubts and, you know, 
worrying thoughts out of your mind yeah. until you're there. Ignoring pain, too. Yeah. Okay. And ignoring the pain, we powered through this last little bit of uphill. Forty feet left. Well, that might be the top. If you see a good spot to rest, let's just go ahead and do it. Yeah, this is good. Woo. Oh my gosh. We did it, more or less. Okay, time to snack it up. This is gonna be good. Oh, oh my back is so sweaty. Oh, man, that was hard. Just gotta do half of that one more time, but we'll be filled with chocolate cake. All right, Robbie, you know we're kind of hitting a, a bellwether when we're on the last gummy pack. <laughs> will you enjoy it with me yes, in these I, trying times? I will in these extremely trying times. So the trick with the gummies is you got to save the gummies for the end of all your salt. Because oh. then it in a way kind of like quenches the saltiness. So you don't have to drink as much afterwards. Yeah, you gotta have each one individually so you can taste each flavor. <laughs> Savor it. Okay, I think we're beginning the downhill now and immediately my spirits have just started to soar. Oh God. Never mind, I spoke too soon. <laughs> spirits have plummeted. Why did I... Open my stupid mouth. <laughs> yeah, I don't think the food was here until you open your mouth. Okay, now I'm willing to call it. I think this is the downhill. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Woo! We are pretty solidly in the downhill now. And this is a wonderful change of pace. Just. Absolutely lovely. Going up over the meadow here. Oh, oh! Wow. So this is prime moose territory. If we were to see a moose, it'd probably be around a spot like this in an open meadow, not too hilly, plenty of water, all of the above. Someone tried making a cabin over there. Whoa. hard to believe the sheer variety of this trail. Every couple of corners, you come up to something just unbelievable. Like if I went on a trail and it was just this, that's the only thing I saw, I'd be like, this is one of the best trails ever. Okay, five miles done, Thomas. Oh, do you think that these droppings might be moose droppings? If you are knowledgeable on moose droppings, please let us know. back in the forest, we filled up on water and I prepared a little boost for my energy. I need a little performance enhancing drugs right here. Electrolytes and a lot of caffeine. We hiked 5.7 miles today. The total of course is going to be 14. Really can't think about like the big picture. You just have to think about your current moment because right now thinking about the big picture just is very sad. <laughs> I guess seeing snow up here reminds you that you're almost at 10,000 feet elevation. It's like you look at the snow, you're like, how is there still snow right now? It gets pretty cold up here, I guess. We had really hit our stride now, and we're making steady progress on the trail. Uh, I also seem to have lost Thomas and Sierra. I do not see them up ahead. Oh, there they are. Hello! So I got some good news and I got some bad news. All right, hit me with both. At the same time? Yeah. Shoot. Um, 
<laughs> this is a creative exercise. In our eight mile journey left, that's the good news, we are about to do the last of the uphill, which is the both good news and bad news. So we gotta go through this bog, it's pretty flat, and we do 500 feet elevation gain. Well, that's a good job combining them into one. Thank you. <laughs> you can see I work in corporate America. We have an opportunity for an exciting experience up ahead. <laughs> Wow, it is quite boggy. And my shoes were not waterproof. That's my foot. See the beaver dam? Whoa! This is so beautiful. You must be studying it too. You can see there's like a little bobby thing out there. Oh! Oh, Sierra, no, what happened? <laughs> Let's hope I don't suffer the same fate. Here we go. I think she fell on purpose. Yeah, must have been. Everything that's in those bags is wet now. <laughs> There's a lot of bones here. Whoa! That's what you were... Okay, I didn't hear what she said. Whoa! See the jawbone right there? Might be an elk, might be a moose. Looks like an elk to me. That seems too small to be a moose. Wow, this trail really still has some surprises for us. Ah. Oh, that's wet. Oh, that's very wet. I think I'd almost rather do the stream crossing again. Yeah. Whew. We made it. That way. It's uphill, right? Yep. Okay, just gotta mentally prepare myself. Okay, well, it's, it's gonna be flat for another, it's uphill. like half mile or so, I think. In case there was any doubt in your mind if that was a true beaver dam. A lot of evidence of it. Yeah, there's one in progress right here. That is so cool. Before this trip, any one section of this trail would have been my favorite trip ever. And we've done like, whoa, huge campsite over there. We've done countless sections of this trail that have just been amazing. 10 out of 10, 11 out of 10. Also 11 out of 10 difficulty. <laughs> junction that should be up ahead and once you get to that then we're really kind of doing the uphill. We are at the halfway point for the day though. We just hit seven miles. It's good. Right now I can't imagine actually being able to finish this trail. <laughs> just one step at a time but good god. Rolling Creek. Tell you what that does not look like a well traversed trail. No. no, no. All right. Wigwam. We merged onto the Wigwam Trail and continue to pack on the miles. I don't think I can do any more for a bit. I gotta take a break. I need at least 15 minutes. That was a good 15 minute break. I feel slightly more energized, at least enough to actually finish this uphill section, I think. Oh, what I would give to be able to just stop 
for the rest of the day at that campsite. The thought of it alone is almost nice enough to keep me going. And we knew we couldn't stop, so it was just one foot in front of the other. Unfortunately, this is becoming a little bit of a death march. <laughs> We're well over halfway there though, so that's encouraging. We're really close to the top. There's gonna be one last really steep part, and then after that, we pretty much go downhill, and then we go uphill slightly, but <laughs> yeah. very great, gradually. Nothing that we can't handle. I don't wanna to speak too soon, but I think we've crested the hill. Yes. Okay. Thomas said we just topped out. So nothing but limousines and candy. Can I see that? That for a second. I want to see that. Everyone. Everyone, this is what an exhausted Robbie looks like. It's rare that you actually see it. You have to go back to episode one when he's lugging his backpack all the way across yeah, Dolly's sides. Well, I was doing something like this. <laughs> yeah. like yes. My lips are so chapped right now. That smiling hurts. <laughs> Uh, we were just talking, this is a good opportunity for us to figure out what our limit is. Because I don't think we've really figured out what our limit is yet. We pretty much found it, I think. <laughs> yep. Sierra grabs every opportunity to take a break for herself. But that she's... The great thing about being a four-legged creature close to the ground, as soon as you want to lie down, you just lie down. No effort. Yep. We've got to, like, stand up and butts keep us up. Okay, we truly have entered a section of the trail that has no significant uphills left. So, I think we could finally start to relax a little bit, and we have started thinking about what our post-hike meal is going to be. And I think we both agree that the greasier and the saltier, the better. Just french fries with salt, greasy grilled cheese, pizza, steak. Okay, I gotta stop thinking about it now. <laughs> The trail has smoothed out significantly. I'm actually feeling a bit of hope now. <laughs> we can do this. I got good news. You see that big mountain right there? Uh -huh. We just go on the other side. You don't even have to go behind it and we're back at the car. Awesome. It's the first time I've seen you smile <laughs> in like five hours. <laughs> it's gonna be long. But you can see it's a valley, so it's going to be pretty flat. Cool. Oh, what a view. I am ready to beast mode out of here. That's a term I haven't used in a long time. <laughs> Let's do it. Wow. It's a... Uh something in the distance. This is, pound for pound, I think this is the best trail we've ever been on. Just non-stop beauty, tons of great camping sites, plentiful water, views to inspire you for the rest of your life. <laughs> the price we paid to do it was well worth it. This is truly awe-inspiring. Awesome, awe-inspiring, just all types of awe. That is what I'm feeling right now. Somebody forgot their shoes. I don't know, maybe somebody's out in the... Those are good shoes though, I have a pair myself. Very nice. of thing does make you wonder what is your true limit because my life is not in danger right now and we're no problem going to be able to make it back to the car it's just kind of a miserable experience but at what point does it start to become actually dangerous and you're like man i don't know i think i'm just gonna die out here 
probably not a great point to be at, man. I'll take this any day. Hey Thomas, it's Horseshoe Bend. Okay, I think we're going to uh, continue around here and go back over there towards those rocks. So this is the Lost Creek. Oh. This is what we waded through just uphill. If you read some maps, they say you can take a shortcut and come this way. I have no idea how, unless you're like a little salmon and you could just <laughs> swim upstream. Wow, this is, looks so nice. Yeah. I think about letting Sierra swim a little bit. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. All right. Go swim. Oh boy. <laughs> wobbly? Very wobbly. Come here. Come here. Good girl. Okay, roughly three miles left. We can do this. I feel motivated, capable, desperate. Maybe the trail wasn't as pronounced in the past. I'm not sure why you need a sign right there. We've passed a lot of other hikers today. And either everybody's already done or just nobody's hiking this section of the trail because nobody's passed us this way or that way. Which that's adding to the atmosphere even more. Feels like we really wandered onto a forgotten land. One thing I keep seeing on the ground are these little furs. Not sure what animal that belongs to, but it's all over the place. Quick break. 10 minutes, no more. Sounds good. Not even gonna take my pack off. Okay, oh baby. That's how she gives her hugs. She puts her head between them. <laughs> I feel so betrayed. <laughs> so betrayed. <laughs> I once heard an interview where they were doing some Navy SEAL training. They like make uh, everyone hike 40 miles with a 60 pound pack. They said, you know, they can weed people out based on when they take breaks are their legs fully extended or not? If your legs are fully extended, uh -huh. then you're not gonna finish the 40 miles. Oh. I don't know why. <sighs> so, doing my best not to fully extend my legs. <laughs> I was telling you, I so badly wanna be one of those people who's just like, no matter what the circumstances, no matter what the conditions, I'm there, I'm at top physical shape. <laughs> I can weather any storm, but I am not. <laughs> I have lots of high highs, but my lows are quite low as well. This might be one of those circumstances in a post-hike meal where we literally just go to the first restaurant we see, <laughs> regardless of how good or bad it is. To be honest, that Wendy's we had on the way in yeah. sounds so good right now. I, I'm thinking fast food. I've always regretted getting fast food after a hike. Uh -huh. Always. This might be the exception. <laughs> Okay, back to it, three miles left. It's a straight shot, we can do this. Feeling good. And so we continued on, hiking on the edge of the forest and occasionally coming back out into the inspiring valley where we could admire the gorgeous landscape. And even though we were on our last leg, I am very tired, but this is truly invigorating. Is this my favorite place on earth? I don't know. If this is not the coolest place I've ever been, it's easily in the top five. Oh, yes. This is what living is all about. This makes it all worthwhile.
Robbie, I know we still have over a mile and a half to go. And in these trying times, I'd like to laugh for you my last, my Thank last you. gummy. Thank kind. you. You have it. No, I'm going to have some, some salt. I need salt too. Okay. Hope you're welcome. Jerky, jerky. Nom, nom. All right. We can do this. Almost there. She looks like she wants some. Okay, we're round in the corner, heading around that hill. I think we can do this, Thomas. I think we can. I really do. I think we can do it. It was looking sketchy there, but we can do it. So close. So we finally had somebody pass us on this section of the trail and um, he told us that the section up ahead is muddier than sh which Thomas just said that is one of the few times where you can say that and you mean it literally. I've done more than 14 miles in my life but I've never, it's never felt more than this. You see this uphill right here, I'm about to lie down there for six hours. <laughs> Recouping the energy. What is you? Um, remember that episode of Seinfeld where Kramer's driving on empty and they're on the highway? Yeah. <laughs> That's me right now. <laughs> Only I'm not excited about it. I'm terrified my limit will come at any moment. Well, how about Sierra? How are you doing? She seems totally fine. Why? As long as you pet her, Robbie, right. she'll be happy. Begins. We're really close to just a mile left, right? As soon as we can see the campground in the distance, I will really start celebrating. Less than one mile. We are now back in the forest with the creek flowing alongside us. Up ahead, we saw a sign that we were getting very close to the trailhead. Still don't know what these are, but I'm glad to see it. it means we're getting close. I think so. Last uphill battle. It is a battle. Yes. <laughs> this is screaming Katahdin to me right now. Yeah. Unfortunately, Andrew won't be there to greet us with cold drinks. Since moving to Colorado, I've hiked all over with Sierra through many challenging trails. There are different types of challenges. Some that are given to us and some that we choose for ourselves. This was a challenge we chose for ourselves, And we can tackle those challenges either alone or with friends. And if there's one thing we found, is that when Thomas and I hike together, we do seem to find a way to test our limits. While we didn't find our true limit, we definitely accomplished something that made us stronger. And a challenge tackled with a friend is made all the sweeter because it's not only something that strengthens ourselves, but our connection to each other. Ah. I see it! Ah. I see it! <sighs> Oh, oh, happy day. Woo! I didn't think, no, oh, I didn't think it was ever gonna happen. Oh, it's in, it's in spitting distance, I can see it. Yes, yes, yes. way back. No! 
Why? Okay, that's unfortunate that the easier route is closed, but it is time to beast mode. We've got the car in sight. That'll give us a second wind. Let's do this. Oh God, please. I can't take any more. I can't take any more. Greedo, what did we do to deserve this? <laughs> Pleasure and pain combined. <laughs> Goodbye, Lost Creek. We did it! We did something. There was never a doubt in my mind that we would make it. But I just, at certain points on the trail, I just couldn't see how. Yeah. I was like, I know we could do it, but how? I mean, it's impressive. You can look at all those mountains, you can just know you circumnavigated those mountains over there. And you gotta feel a sense of pride though, don't you? Maybe the pride will come later. Right now it's just, Sadness for my body. <laughs> okay, good girl. Good girl. Okay, you ready? Up. Look at that jump. <laughs> Double KO. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, the absolute best way to support us is by joining our Patreon community at patreon.com slash adventure. Patrons get early access to the episodes, bloopers, commentaries, and live streams. And at some of the higher tiers, you can get your name in the credits or even one of the special shout outs that you'll see in a bit. We have affiliate links for all of the different backpacking gear that we use in the description below. And we also have a link to our Teespring store where we have t-shirts. Finally, you can check out any of the music from the episodes at adventurearchives.bandcamp.com. Thank you once again for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Under most circumstances, getting $50 worth of Wendy's would be really sad. Not today. Thank you, Robbie. Oh my gosh. Wendy's has never tasted better. It really has. <laughs> I'm not sure if food has ever tasted better. Oh my god. Dink. <clears throat> I've never had a strawberry frosty. It's <clears throat> what you would expect. <laughs> my bar is like. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> if you're wondering why I'm wearing sunglasses in my car in the shade, it's because my eyes are incredibly red. When I went up there and ordered, the guy just gave me this look. I'm like, what? And I looked and let me look at my eyes. Whoa! I know. Holy cow! You have a contact or something? No. I have pink eye. What? I had pink eye a couple weeks ago. You contagious? I mean, if you like lick my eyeball. <laughs> Crap, I wish I hadn't licked your eyeball last night while you were sleeping. It's nuggy time. I kind of want to dump my whole uh, frosty in my, my soda. Ugh. Don't do that. <laughs> You're the guy that likes to dip uh, french fries in the frosty. So you like doing that too? <laughs> <laughs> Hells yeah. I can feel my stomach expanding. <laughs> I think people wonder like, what is it, what is it like to be a fly in the car when Thomas and Robbie drive home from a crazy trip like that? I can say without question that nobody 
eating in this Wendy's right now isn't enjoying it as much as we are. No. It's like when your parents take you to fast food after a soccer game. <laughs> Proud of you. Oh man. Full already. I'm gonna snack on some fries. Oh, we gotta do one more dink. Dink! <laughs> All right. You can't drink us a frosty. A trip well done. Now to climb into my coffin and. <laughs> 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 so, well, I'll have to bury you first. Yeah. <laughs> Hope you know where you're going. <laughs> Hello, this is Jake Buer. I uh, got a call from Jason Bourgeois, and I'm just calling you back. I don't know who you are. Uh, it's Jake Buer. I don't know what you want. You called me. I'm calling you back. If you're looking for Sanwar One, I can tell you I don't know where he is. But what I can tell you is I have a very particular set of skills taught to me by Brian and Katia Strom. Skills I have acquired from Mary Sinkavage. Skills that make me a nightmare for people like you. If you let Jason Bourgeois go now, that'll be the end of it. I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. But if you don't, I will look for you. I will find you. And I will. Wait, are, aren't you Jason Bourgeois? John Truitt wants to give a shout out to Inti Villalobos for being such a good friend. John Truitt, thank you so much. My name is Brian Kitsune and I am the boss. Some might say the best boss. Yes, we've worked with lots of very big clients. Expedition Research LLC, GreatLakesWatercraft.com. What do we do here? God, what don't we do here? Solutions, problem solving. We like to play hard, but we also like to work hard. Just ask Douglas Jackson. Uh, well, I usually get in, I get a cup of coffee, and then I'll go talk to Morgan Ariel Weinrich for a bit, and then uh, I'll go sneak off to the bathroom for a bit. And it's basically time for lunch at that point, so I'll take an hour lunch. I'll usually have lunch with Tim and Nikki. Afterwards, I'll grab a cup of coffee and then I'll see what Liam and Serenity are up to in accounting. Uh, then I'll try to head back to my office, but on the way, I'll chat with Chewy for a little bit while I'm drinking my coffee. Then I'll sit down and um, you know get some good work in, but uh, then it's basically time to go home. And uh, yeah, so we work pretty hard here. I usually get in around good 30 minutes of work every day. Okay, let me give you a tour of the place. Standard office. We've got uh, Brian and Asi Yamagata. And over here, we've got David and Jennifer Dickerson. We like to work as a team here. You know, a lot of teams. Has David and Jennifer Dickerson been saying that I have asthma? Because I don't. If it gets out that I have asthma, then I can't scuba. If I can't scuba, then what has this all been for? What am I working toward? Ren and Yvette would like to shout out all the people who work hard to maintain the trails and wildlife at Acadia National Park, where they just recently visited. Hello, Mia. It's me, Nico. Thank you for teaching me to go outside all those years ago, and for the many adventures we've been on since. Every walk, hike, paddle, and road trip has been, and will be, better with you by my side. Sir, this is a Wendy's? This plant right here is called Jasper Caps. As you can see, it's got these beautiful little purple Gavin Ryans growing on them. And this plant was first discovered by Leon and Lou Lin. Now this plant right here is called James Rakitsky. And if you look closely, you can see some of the Joey and Mellows growing right over here. Now this plant here with the red stems and the weird looking berries is called Christina Alvarez. Now up here you can see how some of the flowers are blooming into these beautiful little Dan Vulcans that are growing on here. But you don't want to eat these Dan Vulcans because they're poisonous. Patreon.com adventure shout outs. You can get them at Patreon. Patreon, Elaine, or Anthony, Charlie Joe, Sue and Tan, Sun Jin Juan, Charlie Joe, Sue and Tan, Sun Jin Juan, 
George Smith, VA, we're talking about the shout outs. Salvador, Gonzalez, we're talking about the shout outs. Miss Bacon, a dance. To the left, to the right, to the left, to the right, to the left, to the right. And lastly, big shout out to Madeline Holly. She wants to give Tommy a shout out and say only 16 more weeks until they start their family adventures. So excited for you, Madeline and Tommy. Pretend this is just the end crowd. It's just us seating here for 15 minutes. <laughs> I think it should be. <laughs> Bless you. Bless you. What an anticlimactic ending. <laughs> Thank you for watching.